that is interested architect, landscape architect, indeed, presentation professional, currently completing his PhD in the Catholic University of Louvain in Belgium. He's also a member of the International Energy Agency Task Force team towards uh, net zero energy buildings. His PhD topic is integrating building performance simulation into design of zero energy buildings, looking at the potential impacts of simulation tool on the decision making of zero energy building design. Thank you. Uh, good morning, thank you for attending my presentations. I would like to ask you for feedback, so I will try to make it in the 10 minutes range, and I hope I get my five minutes with the feedback. Um, first of all, to start, um, I am, have to acknowledge the IEA Task 40, which are working on NCO energy buildings, and my supervisor. And simply what I'm going to present is a prototype uh, I just developed, and it's in the beta version. And I'll present you the preliminary result that we got out of it. Now this was one year ago where now we are, I developed much, much things out of it. But it's a zero energy tool, zero, a design decision tool for zero energy building in the Egyptian context. If you look fast on the Department of Energy, US Department of Energy website, and try to analyze the simulation tools and see just classifying which tools are developed for architects and which are developed for engineers, you find that this is whole kind of tools that are going from 97 to 2010 is for engineers and for architects, the tools that were developed are faulty. If you make another analysis and check which of the tools on the website, it's listing most of the simulation tools, is a post-design evaluative tool and which are post-design evaluative for architects and which is for engineers, you find 10% is most for architects and 90% is for engineers. And for the pre-design informed, you can find less than four tools, which is the one percent. I think if I am an architect I'm going to use a simulation tool, I care more about before taking the decision rather than after designing the building. Um, going into the literature view, I went into most tools and I tried to list them. Are they more in evaluation or are they in the guidance? This was first criteria. Second criteria was are the tools more uh, post uh, sorry, are iterations? hard or medium or low. So I listed most tools and I found there is not bad some tools developed in the pre-decision evaluative range, medium, and what I'm trying to locate or position or niche my research that it becomes more in the low iteration. So it will be a pre-decision with low iteration uh, tool. Uh, another study I did in 2008 was uh, Texas A&M and uh, in Hope University, we made a survey and we collected responses for 500 engineers, 500 architects, and we asked architects what's the most important ranking criteria for your simulation. And the result was architects asked for intelligence, while engineers asked for accuracy. But it, it shows again that architects want a tool that's intelligence, that's giving direction, that's telling you what to do, what not to do. Anyway, to simplify it, I always show this slide when I give presentations in the engineering community, but we are sensibly in PLEA. So we are very trained with this mental, visual, communication-wide way, while the simulation is for me like a field of minds of 0, 1, 0, 1, an input file, output file, a machine. So it becomes a mind, a field of minds for architects. So this is difficult that you have the part of some human social psychological meeting with very analytical. So there is a lot of problems with existing tool. I can list 10 out more than those. Uh, but at the same time, I added another challenge since I'm interested in net zero energy building. And I believe in a country like Egypt, with very little modification, we can have net zero energy building. We have very high solar radiation. And the, the climate is really relatively comfortable. So we can reach. But then you have the six metrics that you have to look at as an architect from the first day. So it will be the matter of are you going to choose an economic or energy or carbon metric? Is it the comfort level that you will select for your building? The passive strategies, the energy efficiency strategies, the renewable energy system strategies, and finally if there will be innovative solutions. So these I think six main criteria for any tool. So based on that I developed my objective to develop a decision tool, and the context of, of this tool will be in Egypt and all these architects, architecture students, junior architects, and that main uh, objective is how to inform the decision making. To contextualize the tool, because you are not so much familiar with the tool, 
The focus tool will be on high performance for net zero energy building. The focus tool this time for this publication was the narrow house, and now I made it a bit, bit broader. And to be familiar with the Egyptian coal uh, 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 context is very cooling dominant. This heating is like that. We don't heat actually, we remain the low region of the cooling. And the prices of energy are very highly subsidized, so there is no consciousness with uh, uh, environmental design. Uh, the most important one I'm thinking about that the radiation is very high. You are reaching something from 8 to 9 kilowatt hour per square meter per day, and that's a very good idea. The existing in Egypt typology is most probably those narrow buildings that are everywhere popping in the cities, and they are minimalistic, urban pack parcel, modular replication, no shading, no green, steel and concrete, poor construction, AC dependent, poor indoor environmental quality. While I'm trying to make a juxtaposition on the other side, trying to have innovative typology for an architecture that's biodynamic with courtyard, low tech shading, landscape break, and so on and so on. So in this context, I was just thinking, would it be easier to move our standards? Because the first thing when somebody from a developing country looks in, in the literature, you found the literature of the developed country, the lead is Ashen, which is already Dubai looking to Los Angeles. So what I'm trying to do, instead of going in our comfort to harm via high consumption, why don't we just make a shortcut like that? That's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, one of my work things was to benchmark. I made a lot of surveys in Alex, Sandria, uh, Asim, and Cairo to get a benchmark to base it as a model for my tool. Then I chose as a comfort model because this is also interesting. If you follow the Fangler model, or the Ashley 55 adaptive comfort, or the 15251 European Union adaptive comfort, or the Givoni comfort, that was very interesting also to decide, and I, I embedded that in the tool. And finally, I came with the flow chart that embeds. Uh, Egyptian standard, the database of the materials that we mainly construct and build with, and selected the basic early design parameters that most architects would like to have guidance on, and took my benchmark as a base and connected. The model is uh, related with uh, energy plus, so I'm just hooking in with a visual basic uh, manipulation on the input file, I communicated, you run the simulation, and finally, you get the results. This is our first look on the interface, and it allows psychometric analysis. One of the things I didn't see in many tools, they don't have this feature. Uh, I found it surprising. Uh, and then you can compare the result. Another feature was added to it, the PVs and the renewable systems. So it allows you simply to select the place you are and the type of uh, uh, PV system and orientation, and it gives you kind of guidance on that. And finally, it gives you a relation of area versus electricity, electricity or yield, so that you can early on have this whole information. Um, the first thing I was writing the first result, my supervisor asked me, okay, why don't you make a testing, usability testing? I went back to Cairo uh, just last August 2010, and I consulted it with a group of professional architects, uh, environmental design architects, and architecture student graduates, and I came up with the result. Simply, I saw that my input clarity was high, but was very low, uh, and I think it is a very overlooked thing, the usability testing. I was even in Denver, in Denver, the National Renewable Lab, two months ago, and I asked him for this Google SketchUp plugin and the Open Studio, do you do any usability testing? They said, no, we don't do that. It's overlooked, it's by default. Uh, thing. Anyway, I think at the end of the day, I have a contribution for the tool till now that has a psychometric chart, early, it, it suits early examples, it's based on the data simulation model for Energy Plus, it can, it's able to model from uh, passive and active system, it's based on operative temperature, it accelerates the process, has generating baseline, it's a contextualized tool, and it's a, a single tool, a single screen tool. The limitations, I can list more than that, we can have talk till tomorrow on that, but I have to mention it. There is an abstraction in the tool. It's only, it, it only can simulate the existing technology that's embedded in my home that I did. It has no customization. The geometry is also a challenge or, or a limitation. There is no environmental index, cost index, daylighting index. I agree with all of that. But already I'm more, I, I finished prototype 2. I'm presenting prototype 1. Prototype 2, I embedded in it sensitivity analysis. So this is the part that gives the direction before you take the decision. You can see how is the influence of your, of your decision and the importance of the parameter. 
And I also did case studies uh, last uh, February in Cairo. Uh, and maybe for the future it could be integrated for multiple, uh, multiple buildings, other typologies. It can be developed for code compliance, or other tools, or be integrated in any program for electricity. I think by that it's my end of presentation. I still have 24, 23, 20 seconds. <laughs>